We're about to walk through a crackhead lane now. Is all this? So when I had cancer and I was diagnosed with cancer, being told that he's got months to live or being told that you're never going to fight again, so check the guns. I was a top pressure guy. I need to be able to get up if I get put on my back, so. Tell you what, Dora. George Staines is not eating this good. I can guarantee you that right now. Mine and my dad's gym, but I started going to the gym with my dad when I was like 12, 13 to get stronger and, and be healthier. So it's definitely got that family family environment to it. It's what we wanted to, to take on as well. Going smaller to cut it or to step through it. So I first met Aaron when we were using the IPC gym. And slowly I got to know Aaron personally and you start to hear about his story and everything that he's been through. You know, he's one hell of a bloke. He's been through some journey in his life, not one that I could ever comprehend or even pretend to understand. Uh, fighting cancer, being told that he's got months to live or being told that you're never going to fight again to all of a sudden competing for a world title. This story is like sometimes I tell people and they don't believe it. I feel like that's almost my my story as well, going through those dark times and then this is my my chance of a fairy tale special ending that I would maybe never thought existed. This is like my like Rocky movie. I'm proud of who I am, but the people who have made me who I am. You know, I'm so excited for this fight, I can't wait and I just want to show the Octagon fans what the flyweights are about. Ashton's not exactly uh, the nicest of places. We're about to walk through a uh, crackhead lane now. There's always people smoking crack down this lane. But uh, don't worry, you're with me, so they won't try and rob your camera or anything. The fuck is all this? So, oh my God, oh my days. Oh my days, the voice. Oh my God. He's good. He's good. Here's a look at this hat. Is that a Popovka? Go on. He had, a, he, had a, he, had, he had a communist thing there. Oh, you've got, you've got fleas now, lad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll turn the fans around and uh, when they see what a good fighter I am and when they see that I can actually back yeah, up all the, fight, all the shit talk with these fists, then maybe they'll, uh, maybe they'll turn around and become fans of mine, you know? Uh, they'll definitely cut that out, though. <laughs> we go for a Greg's. You know Greg's? Greg's is a bit too much now. I'll be 82 kilo after a Greg's like. Oh, 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 oh shit. I'm like, okay. Bit of Cajun chicken. Mm. Tell you what, Dora. George Staines is not eating this good. I can guarantee you that right now. That's how you know I've done the weight cut properly when I can still have cake. Just doing some rolling, come to see Liam. Um, you need to see him, and I see him in a couple of weeks. Um, getting some nice, not just like blowy rolls, you know, situational snow. Just repping what I'm going to be doing on the fight day. Um, yeah, good, a lot of fun. Like, I was just flashing on there, I did my job. Um, really good black box, you know, great guard game. And like, showed me a couple of times, but every time I wrestled back up, like, immediately. So that's what I need to do, you know. As a top pressure guy, I need to be able to get up if I get put on my back. So, yeah, perfect rules. I'm obviously a bit off. Um, I've got my joggers on on that, <laughs> so maybe a little bit. But, um, no, absolutely sick rounds. George has sparred for his entire life. He's a veteran of the game. More than anything, it's about building confidence in the fighter now. So what I'm not doing is putting him in, him in bad position, specific rounds for this last... Uh, last session, I'm just making sure that his confidence is at an all-time high, that he's hitting the things that uh, he's worked through the camp, and I know that he's had a stellar camp working at different gyms through this time. So, when I had cancer, and I was diagnosed with cancer, obviously couldn't go train and everything, and, and I used to be in the gym two, three times a day, or coaching, I just needed, needed something to to help and give me a bit of focus and that's when I got Lenny and he become, become my focus so like when I was waking up I didn't have like a, he was my priority rather than what I was going through or, or what treatment I had to do today and that stalking that squirrel he's not gonna get it but he'll try his best oh come 
it's massive having a chance to be the first octagon flyweight champion. This is a world championship fight that I've been preparing all my career for. Something I've always wanted and now I'm going to use everything I've learned from all my other fights and all my experience inside and outside of the sport to, to take this opportunity. It's not something I want to say. It's, you know, I've spent six, eight, ten weeks getting ready for. I've spent my whole career, my whole life getting ready for something like this. My thoughts on Elias, uh, he's a very good opponent. He's competed in the UFC at the highest level, fought some really good guys, uh, and it's a big challenge in front of me, but it wouldn't be an Aaron A.B. story without it being my toughest test yet in the sport, and it's one I feel like I'm, I'm capable of, of overcoming. Uh, it's a five-round fight, which suits me, but, yeah, I, I am under no illusion that I've got a tough, tough matchup ahead of me. The octagon hand rocks, you know. I've always liked being in the spotlight, to be fair. I've always known where I'm going to be. And like the people that I look up to in the sport, you know, um, the people I've looked up to from my days watching WWE as a kid. It's understanding that this sport is, is business as well as a sport and you have to sell yourself. I worked in sales for four years of my life and I, I know how to sell myself. I know how to sell. I could sell sand to an Arab, as I've said before. Uh, I could sell ice to an Eskimo. It's definitely who I am. It's not, it's not any sort of put on persona. I was a bit more shy as a kid, I would say. I mean, I'm moving around schools a lot, always moving towns, but it's just something that like growing up in Ireland, like you have to be able to give that Virgo back. <laughs> Woo! Check the guns. Check the guns, though. When you get the pump, it's sometimes better than when you got.